Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about how to find the longest palindromic substring in linear time using Manneker's algorithm. So here you are given a string and you have to find the longest palindromic substring in this string. So there are many uh, palindromic substrings in this string. For example, this, this, or this with center x. So the question is to find the longest palindromic substring. So the longest palindromic substring here is this with center as b and the length is 9. So there are many algorithms to solve this in O of n square time but today we are going to consider the Menkers algorithm which solves it in O of n time. Also for keeping the video simple I am only going to consider the odd length palindromes but I will show later on how you, without losing generality you can also solve it for even length palindrome. So in the next section, let's see how Manneker's algorithm works. So first thing I do is take a temporary array of the same size as my input array. So then I start expanding around A. So there is nothing to expand around A, so the length of the longest palindrome with center A will be of 1. Then we go to B. Again, we are just dealing with the odd length palindromes, so we don't have to look for the palindrome between A and B. So we can directly jump to B, and this is for simplicity purpose. So we go to B. The longest palindrome around center B will be of length 3. Then we go to A. The longest palindrome around A will be of length 1. Then we go to X. The longest palindrome around center X will be 3, 5, and then 7. So 7. At this point, the question is, what should be the next center? So we have already explored till this point. So the question is, what should be the next center? Can we say this x will be the next center? No. If we do that, we miss the palindrome around B, which is the longest palindrome, palindromic substring in this string. So can we go to A and then go to B and then go to A and like explore around A and then explore around B and then explore around A? We can do that, but the problem is then it becomes a O of n square time algorithm and cannot be done in a linear time. So how do we effectively pick the next center? So to pick the next center, the idea is that we should pick such a guy as the next center such that the palindrome around it expands till the right edge of the characters we have explored till now. So palindrome around A expands just till A and doesn't go till the right edge which is 6. So this guy cannot be the, cannot be the next center because any palindrome around A will be contained around this bigger palindrome so this will never give me a longest palindrome. What about B? The palindrome around B at least expands till palindrome around B is here so it at least expands uh, to the right edge of the current, current center which is this guy. So B can be the next candidate. And what about A? Uh, Again, palindrome around A at least expands till the right edge of the current uh, center palindrome, which is X. So A also can be the next candidate. But out of B and A, B gives me the longest palindrome, which is at least of length 3, while A gives me of length 1. So my next candidate will be B. Again, why B work, Why this works is because if, if my palindrome around this center expands at least till the right edge of the current palindrome, of the current palindrome, the thing is there is a possibility that it can expand even more. Since it's not contained in the bigger palindrome which means that there is a possibility it can expand more. If you look at B, it, here it expands to the right edge and then it can continue to expand more and probably might and can give me a bigger length palindrome which is why the next entry will be B. So now the question is how do we know that which center has a palindrome which expands to the right edge. I mean we can go to A and see does the palindrome around A expand to the right edge of uh, the palindrome around under X and then we go to B and then we go to A but if we do that again this algorithm doesn't stay linear. So what we do is we use the information we have calculated till now. So if you, if you look at X we know that there is a palindrome from 0 to 6 so we know that this side should be the mirror of this side. So, and we have already calculated what is the longest palindromes around on this side, so 1, 3, 1. So what I can say is that the longest palindrome on the other side will at least be of these lengths. So this A 
is a mirror of this A, so the longest palindrome here will at least be of length 1. The longest palindrome around B will at least be of length 3. And the longest palindrome around this A will at least be of length 1. Now I have this information, and so now I can make a call that which will be my next center, and that will be this guy because the palindrome around this guy at least expands till the right edge of the current palindrome I have found. So this is how B will be my next center. Let's expand around center B. So we know that the palindrome under center B was at least of length 3. So there is no reason to look at these two guys and we start comparing directly from here and here. So this is same, then this is same, and then this is same and these guys are different. So the palindrome around center B will be of length 9. So at this point, uh, at this point, our question is what should be the next center? So let's see again. So we go back here, we copy this number here. The saying that palindrome around this will at least be of length one or more. Then we go here. Can we copy this seven here? And the answer is no. Why? The palindrome around this x was of length, uh, the palindrome around this x was expanding from this point to this point, and the palindrome around this b is expanding from this b to this b. So the palindrome around this x goes beyond the left edge of, of this uh, my current palindrome, so I, there is no guarantee that the palindrome on the other side will be of length 7. So the palindrome around this other side will, we know that will be till this edge and this point, so the size will be 5 instead of 7. Also, then we go to uh, A, and this will be of length 1, and then we go to B. The same is for B. The palindrome around this B was expanding from this to this, and this is beyond the left edge of my current palindrome under B, so I cannot say that the palindrome at this B will be of length 3. So this will be of length 1. So now the question is, who should I pick as my next center? Should I pick 5 as my next center? I mean this X as my next center? And the answer is no. There is no reason to pick uh, this guy as the next center. And let's understand why. If, if we pick, the reason I'm saying there is no reason to pick X as the next center is because there is no way it'll, it will grow beyond the current, current length of Y. Why? I mean, you might say that the current length is 5. What if this character was A? And what if there was another X and another A and another B after this? It's a valid point. The point is, if this character was A, we would have already expanded under this center. So the only reason this guy stopped here was because this character was not A. We, we matched to this point, and these two guys were different. So we stopped here. So the only reason we stopped was because this guy was not A. If this guy was A, we would have continued to explode under this center B and we would have not stopped and the dynamics would be different, the values would be different. So since this is not A and this is B, that's the reason we stopped and since this is B or any character which is not A, there is no way a palindrome under X will expand more. This palindrome is totally contained under this one, so let's look at this guy. This guy here also has the same problem. There is no way, the only reason we st stopped for this B was because this A was not this A. And there is no way we can expand more in this direction because, I mean, there is no way this guy would be A and expand more here because if this was A, we would have explored, continue to explore under, under this center. So since this is not A, we stopped here. So this is B. So there is no way we'll have a palindrome bigger than this size. So the next center will be this guy, which is uh, B, last B, and the palindrome around it is of length 1. So finally, we just iterate through this input array, and 9 will be our answer. In the next section, let's look at another bigger example, and let's try to understand these concepts again. Let's work through this example to clearly understand the Manneker's algorithm. So we have four cases here. Case one is, do not pick a character as a new center if the palindrome under it is totally contained under the current palindrome. 
The case number two is, if the current palindrome expands all the way till the end of the input, there is no reason to proceed and we should break out of the while loop. Case three is, pick a character as a center if it expands all the way to the right edge and its mirror palindrome expands all the way to the left edge. Basically, it's a proper suffix of the current palindrome, a proper prefix of the current palindrome. And do not pick a character as a new center if it expands all the way to the right edge, but its, but its mirror palindrome expands beyond the left edge. Basically, it's not a proper prefix. So let's apply all these four cases on this example. So what I did is I took a, a new array of the same size and again, we are only going to deal with the odd length palindrome for the purposes of simplicity. So we start with A, the palindrome here is of length 1. We start with B, the palindrome here is of length 3. Then we go to A, the palindrome here is of length 1. We go to X. So this is same, this is same and this is same. So the palindrome here is of length 7. So at this point, we, are, we have to pick the new center. So we work backwards. We go to this one and copy it here. Since the palindrome here is of length one for this A, it will be totally contained under the current palindrome, which is, of, which is going from this A to this A. So this is a case number one. So this guy will not be the new center. Then we go to here and we copy this guy here. So palindrome, uh, this is now case three. The palindrome with center B expands all the way to the right edge and its mirror expands all the way to the left edge. It's a proper prefix of the current palindrome. So B is our new center. So we expand around B. Again, we know that B at least has a palindrome of length 3. So we start comparing this X with this X. It's same, it's same, and it's same, and then they are different. So the palindrome here is of length 9. So then we have to pick the next center. Again, we start working backwards from nine. So one copies here. This is a case one. There is no way this, uh, this guy is totally contained under the current palindrome going from B to B. This seven. So the palindrome at center X is from, was from A to A. So it was the palindrome at center X was going beyond the current uh, palindrome. So it's not a proper prefix. So we hit a case four so x should not be the new center. So we'll put the value 5, which is the maximum palindrome, which is the maximum size palindrome with the center x, but this guy will not be the new center as because it's a case number 4. So then we uh, go here. This is uh, totally contained, so it's a case number 1. Then we go here. Again, this b as a palindrome which is goes beyond the left center of the palindrome under center B. So again, this B should not be the new center, but we'll just put the value here of one, which is a total sense palindrome under center B. So our next center will be Y, since none of the other guys match the criteria. So we expand around Y, this is same, this is same, this is same, this is same, this is same. So the length here is uh, 11. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So again, we work backwards. So we copy this guy here. This is case 1. So this is totally contained under this palindrome. This is case 1. This guy, 5. So palindrome with center X was here to here. And our current palindrome is from here to here. So palindrome under center X is a proper prefix of this guy. So this guy here will go till all the way till the right edge. And so this guy will be our new center because it's a case number three. So this guy becomes our new center, five. So when I go here, I already know that there's a palindrome of length five. So I, uh, I start working, I, five, five characters are already taken care of. So I compare them, they are same and they are same. So seven and nine. And now we hit the end of the input. So we hit case number two. So that's it, we'll stop processing at this point because all the palindromes after this will be of smaller size. So at this point, we just iterate through this array, find for the maximum number, which is 11. So the palindrome under center Y will be of length 11. And uh, that will be the longest palindromic substring for this string. The runtime complexity will be two of N. 
So basically O of n. In the next section, let's see how do we deal with the even length uh, palindromes. So let's see how we'll deal with the even length palindrome. So here the maximum length palindrome will be of length 4 and the center is between these two A's. So I got this technique from the lead code which and it makes coding really easy. So what we do is we take a new input array of uh, size 2n plus 1, so this is uh, 11. And what we do is we put a special sentinel characters between all the these characters. So let's say dollar was that character, so we say dollar a dollar b dollar a dollar a dollar b and then dollar. So now all we have to do is apply our regular uh, algorithm which we just discussed before on this input string and then that will give you the longest palindrome and then once you get the longest palindrome all if you have to do is divide it by 2. So in this case uh, the longest palindrome will be from here to here and its length will be 3, 5, 7, 9. Once you get this value all you do is divide it by 2 and get 4 which is the length of the longest palindrome from V to V. So again this doesn't affect the runtime complexity because we are still dealing in n. So even with this the runtime complexity will be O of n. So this is all I have to talk about Manneker's algorithm today. Uh, I would ask my viewers to like this video, share this video, comment on this video, check out my GitHub link and also like my Facebook page. The code is in the description section of this video. The link to the code is in the description section of this video. Alright, thanks again for watching this video.